Yo, what's up? You've probably heard on the news recently, either on Facebook, newspapers, or whatever your, your news source is today, about a very, very big flying animal that was found in Alberta quite recently. You're probably wondering, what should I know and what should I make of all of this incredible news? Well, here at Zachasaurus, my name is Zach, and as a science educator, today we will talk about Cryodracon Boreas, one of the, actually not one of the, the biggest flying animal ever found anytime, anywhere on Earth. Based off a few cervical vertebrae, part of the wings, and part of the legs, the cold dragon of the northern winds, that's what it's called actually, was found in Alberta and is thought to have lived about 75 million years ago and therefore lived with many famous dinosaurs like Gorgosaurus, Dromaeosaur, and Styracosaur, which some of you might know. But speaking of which, uh, Cryodracon was not a dinosaur. <gasps> Newsflash gang, it belonged to the group that we call the pterosaurs. It includes very famous winged reptiles like the pteranodon and pterodactyl. And these animals, while often associated with dinosaurs, are not dinosaurs. And why is that? Well, actually, that's a very, very interesting question that would take a long time to answer. And you know what that means? It means I'm going to make a video out of it for sure in the following months. So please, subscribe if you want to know more about that. And yeah, that being said, it might not be a dinosaur, but it still had dinosaur-like proportions. I mean, Creodricon is estimated at 250 kilograms and a 10 meter wingspan. And just to put that in image, that is as big as a Cessna airplane. I mean, nothing compares to this today. It's absolutely out of this world. This living, breathing airplane, if you want to put it that way, was part of a very special group of pterosaurs called the Asdar Kids. Asdar kids are characterized by having very long and sturdy limbs, very long beaks, and very long necks, which is honestly quite different than, you know, more typical pterosaurs like Pteranodon, which, you know, had very, very long wings, perfect for a very, uh, you know, albatross-like lifestyle, you know, soaring over the ocean for months on and looking for food. That was not the Asdar kids deal at all. Actually, if you want to compare them to modern animals, imagine a stork. You know, storks are very sturdy, very good on land, but they can fly from site to site where they do forage. So if you want to look for an analog of, you know, modern analog of uh, Cryodracon, I would go for, imagine a marabou stork. So, you know, a carnivorous or opportunistic bird from Africa that can basically, you know, hunt on the ground and gobble everything and can catch, but it's as big as a giraffe. So yeah, very, very scary stuff, I'll be honest with you. But you see, how do we actually know all of this based on literally nine bones? Well, you see, in paleontology, most prehistoric animals are not known from complete skeletons, but some of their relatives are. And because of comparative anatomy, you can therefore check with a more complete animal and infer what we know for this animal to a less complete taxon, just like Cryodracon. Uh, and in that case, the animal it is compared to very often is Quetzalcoatlus. It's very, very similar, but Quetzalcoatlus was found in 1996, is a lot more complete, and was until very recently the biggest flying animal ever found. But our boy Cryodracon, the Canadian proud, is now a little bit bigger and has dethroned the uh, winged serpent king, which is what Quetzalcoatlus basically means, which is pretty cool. And what that hints to is that, you know, paleontology is always moving forward. There's always new things to discover. And it's amazing because, well, there's always more things to learn. And folks, with that all out of the way now, thank you very much for watching. This has been a pleasure making this video once again. Uh, you notice I released the French version first. I am trying to make a bilingual channel now, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly how this will be executed. But folks, don't worry, I'll be back in two weeks for more dino stuff, more prehistoric stuff. And if you like what I'm doing, subscribe, like, and we'll see each other in exactly two weeks. It's a rendezvous. Therefore, folks, thank you very much, and have a fantastic day. Stay curious.